Have you ever wondered how a needle clock is made? This timekeeping marvel has a riveting story that dates back hundreds of years. The needle clock, also known as the mechanical clock, was first invented in medieval Europe during the 14th century. It was a significant leap in the evolution of timekeeping devices, marking the shift from sundials and water clocks to more sophisticated mechanisms. The key figures in this invention remain largely anonymous, lost to the sands of time. However, their contributions to horology, the study of timekeeping, have been nothing short of revolutionary. The needle clock with its intricate gears and hands has been instrumental in shaping our understanding and measurement of time. Its invention ushered in a new era, one where time could be precisely tracked, leading to advancements in various fields such as navigation, science, and daily life. Now that we have a brief understanding of the needle clock's history, it is time to unravel the fascinating process of making one. To build a needle clock, we need to understand its components first. The heart of the clock is the face. This is where we see time unfold, where the hour, minute, and seconds hands dance their unending waltz. These hands are the messengers of time, each one signifying a different unit, the hour hand for hours, minute hand for minutes, and the seconds hand for seconds. Behind this dance is a complex ballet of gears, each one interlocking with the next in perfect harmony. These gears driven by the power source, move the hands around the face of the clock, helping us track the passage of time. The power source is the energy that brings life to our needle clock. This could be a battery, a wind-up mechanism, or even a weight-driven system, each one providing the energy required to keep the gears turning. With our components ready, we can now commence the assembly process. The assembly process begins with the clock face and hands. This is where the essence of time-telling comes to life and the character of the clock starts to reveal itself. Let's start with the clock face, the canvas upon which the story of time is painted. Traditionally, it's a circular plate etched or painted with 12 equally spaced numbers to represent the hours. The central point of the clock face is crucial. It's the focal point where all the hands are attached and pivot, and it's the heart of the clock's movement. Now let's move on to the hands of the clock. There are typically three hands, the hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand. The hour hand is the shortest and slowest, making a full rotation every 12 hours. The minute hand is longer and moves 12 times faster than the hour hand, completing a full turn every hour. The second hand, the longest and fastest of the three, makes 60 laps around the face every hour. The attachment of the hands is an exercise in precision. Each hand is carefully affixed to the central pivot point, ensuring they are perfectly balanced. This balance is critical to the accurate movement of the hands and, therefore, the correct telling of time. The hand's motion is dictated by the gears hidden behind the face of the clock. The gears are engineered to move the hands at their respective speeds. As the gears turn, they engage with the hands, pushing them around the face at a steady pace. As the hands are attached, they must be set at the correct position relative to each other. This is known as synchronizing the hands. It's an important step because if the hands aren't synchronized, the clock won't tell the correct time. With the hands in place, our clock is starting to take shape, but it's not time telling yet. The next phase will involve integrating the gears which will bring our clock to life and set the hands in motion. But that's a story for another scene. The heart of a needle clock lies in its gears. These intricate parts, often hidden from view, are the true stars of the timekeeping show. Let's delve into their assembly and integration. The gears of a needle clock, also known as cogs, are ingeniously designed pieces of metal. They are usually made of brass, a material known for its durability and resistance to wear. The process of assembling these gears is a delicate one, requiring precision and a steady hand. Each gear is carefully placed, ensuring that its teeth align perfectly with those of its neighboring gear. Once the gears are assembled, they are integrated with the clock hands. This is where the magic happens. The gears are connected to the clock hands through a central post. As the gears rotate, they drive the hands around the clock face. The largest gear, known as the hour wheel, moves the hour hand, while a smaller gear, the minute wheel, propels the minute hand. The gears also play a crucial role in keeping accurate time. Each gear is carefully calibrated to move at a specific speed. This is determined by the size and number of teeth on each gear. By ensuring that each gear moves accurately, we can ensure that our clock keeps time to the second. Our clock hands are now moving, but a power source is needed to keep them going. And that, dear listener, is the subject of our next scene. So stay tuned as we delve into the power behind the needle clock. Like any machine, a needle clock needs power to function. 
So, how exactly does the needle clock get its power? Well, there are a couple of ways. The most common power sources are either a battery or a winding mechanism. A battery-powered needle clock is quite straightforward. The battery sends an electrical charge to a quartz crystal oscillator. This crystal vibrates at a precise frequency, which then drives the gears to move the clock hands. It's a bit like the conductor of an orchestra, keeping everything in perfect harmony. On the other hand, winding clocks often seen in antique models, harness mechanical energy. You wind the clock by turning a key or knob which tightens a spring inside the clock. As the spring unwinds, it releases stored energy, driving the clock's gears and moving the hands. It's an intricate balance of tension and release, a dance of mechanical precision that has been practiced for centuries. The power source is integrated into the clock during the assembly process. It's tucked away, often at the back of the clock, allowing easy access for battery replacement or winding. From there it's connected to the gear assembly, supplying the necessary energy to keep the clock ticking. With the power source in place, our needle clock is now ticking away accurately and reliably. From a simple spring or a humble battery, we've harnessed the power to measure time second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour. We have now explored the fascinating process of making a needle clock. From understanding its historical origins, to identifying each of its components, to assembling the clock face and hands, integrating the gears, and finally powering the clock. Each stage is a testament to human ingenuity and precision. It's a dance of mechanics and artistry, creating a device that accurately measures the passing of time. The next time you glance at a needle clock, appreciate the intricate process that went into its making. Thank you for joining us on this time-telling journey.